What's happening everyone? This is Brandon from Tech Kings. I have in front of me a new backpack from Low Pro, which has been serving me very well as a companion on the road, at the office, and in the air for the last couple of months. If you're like me and appreciate a backpack that can fit multiple rolls while remaining compact and stylish, then you're definitely not going to want to miss this look at the Low Pro Photo Hatchback 22L AW. Before we get to the bag itself, let me give you guys some insight as to why I chose the photo hatchback in the first place. Much like the carry speed camera sling that I reviewed a while back, I purchased the photo hatchback with the intention of using it at the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas. If I was to be satisfied with my choice, then this bag had to hit a few key points. Logically it had to carry my DSLR and have room to spare for accessories like lenses, flashes, batteries, memory cards, and card readers. It also had to be able to carry a water bottle externally because walking several football fields worth of exhibit space and hoofing it between hotels on the strip gets a bit tiring. Plus having to open up the bag every time I wanted a drink would just be an unnecessary annoyance. My mobile device of choice for the trip was a Microsoft Surface RT so I really wanted to find something with a tablet pocket or enough room for a small notebook. Those were my only three requirements for a photo backpack and while they might not seem very demanding, I was shocked at how many bags I was able to immediately strike off my list. Then I discovered this photo hatchback from Lopro, which at a price of $119.99 isn't cheap for its size, but it fit my wish list to a T and does everything it sets out to do extremely well. Starting with the exterior of the bag, you'll quickly notice the Low Pro logo printed in this large distressed font, which I actually really like. Some people don't like a lot of branding on their bags, but I think this has been tastefully done and the distressed font kind of helps the text blend in with the rest of the back. And although Low Pro is a well-known brand, there really isn't anything about this visible portion of the bag that screams, hey, I'm a camera backpack carrying hundreds of dollars in hardware. Now this bag is available in two other colors, which Low Pro calls Pepper Red and Galaxy Blue, both of which are a lot more vibrant than this charcoal color and are sure to get you noticed. Another thing that's immediately apparent upon handling the bag is the quality of the materials. The photo hatchback is mainly made up of ballistic nylon, like most technical bags these days. The shoulder harness and back of the bag are covered in a heavily ventilated mesh that has a reasonable amount of cushion, but probably not enough to keep you comfortable on a long hike with heavier gear. The plastic buckles are beefy enough to stand up to normal wear and tear, and do a good job of keeping the straps at the desired length. There's also a chest strap and a waist strap to further stabilize your load. On both sides of the bag are these stretchy, breathable pockets that can accommodate a large Nalgene or a decent sized tripod. Being able to have a water bottle within arm's reach without having to open up the bag is a huge convenience, and it's something that I honestly think should be standard on every backpack especially a photo backpack, given that it can double as a tripod holder. The Nalgene is about the largest thing you can fit in these, just to give you an idea of what these pockets can manage. Up top, we have another basic convenience feature that ends up getting utilized a lot more than you would think, which is a grab handle. At first glance, it doesn't look like it can handle much weight, but I haven't had any reservations about using this handle to lift 20 pounds or so of cargo. The seams on the back here appear pretty robust, so the average user shouldn't have any issues hefting a reasonable load with this handle. The photo hatchback also comes with one of Lopro's great all-weather covers, hence the AW in the name. 
It's stowed in this bottom pocket and fully encases the body of the bag to protect your belongings from rain, snow, and sand. If you spend a lot of time in the outdoors and get stuck without an umbrella, this is another feature that can really prove helpful. It's worth noting that the fit of this weather cover isn't as great as I have seen on other bags, and this can probably be attributed to the photo hatchback not having the boxy shape of most other photo backpacks, which would make this cover conform a bit better. Nevertheless, the elastic band sewn into the cover grips the outside of the bag really well, and these small Velcro tabs provide a bit of added security, so you don't have to worry about a wind gust ripping the cover off. That about finishes our look at the exterior of the bag, so let's start dissecting the inside. We'll start with the tablet pocket, which I was pleased to find was separate from the main compartment. There seems to be a 50-50 split between bag manufacturers who integrate laptop and tablet sleeves into the main compartment of a bag, and those who keep the two separate. I prefer the latter approach, since it gives me quicker access. Granted, it gives would-be thieves quicker access too, so I guess preference just comes down to how paranoid you are. The pocket is actually split into two, giving me room to fit both the Microsoft Surface tablet and this handy gridded organizer for all of my miscellaneous stuff like cables, flash drives, and cleaners. You can see that there's still quite a bit of height left in the pocket, and Lowepro advertises that this pocket will fit an 11-inch MacBook Air. Now, one unintended use for this tablet pocket that I discovered is that it's very well suited to carrying a hydration bladder. This is a 1.5 liter bladder taken from my Camelback, and as you can see, I can fit it into the pocket with it completely full. I can even route the hose through the loops on the shoulder straps to make it easily accessible. Moving around to the front of the bag, we see why Lowepro called it the photo hatchback. The camera compartment is covered by this zippered hatch that integrates into the backrest. This layout keeps the center of gravity down low as possible, with the heavier camera at the middle. Now, some people might be against having their expensive DSLR sitting at the bottom of the bag, but I think the benefits of Lowepro's implementation here far outweigh the only downside, which is the potential for damaging the contents. Firstly, the entire compartment is surrounded by half-inch thick padding, and you get a level of added bottom protection from the crumpled up all-weather cover that sits just below here. If you carry your camera in here with the lens facing upwards, you shouldn't have to worry about damaging your display or an expensive lens. Moving into the main compartment, I'm happy to see that Lowepro gave the bag a very wide opening to make loading and unloading easy. The compartment is completely open with the exception of these two mesh pockets and a large zippered pocket at the rear. Keep in mind that this is the only interior zippered pocket that the bag has, so if you're one to really keep the inside of the bag organized, you'll be missing out a bit. I find that the zippered pocket is perfect for keeping small items corralled, and the stretchy pockets are perfect for holding a small notebook or a calculator if you're a student. I don't know the exact volume of this compartment, but you should be able to fit a light sweater or a rain jacket in here without any issue. Now, here's the party trick that makes the photo hatchback such a versatile bag. The entire camera box section can be removed to be carried on its own or inside another bag like a suitcase. Now, you're free to fold this interior divider down against the side of the bag to give you a respectable amount of space. Now when you aren't busy using the bag at photo shoots and events, you can continue to use it day to day as a basic backpack rather than letting it sit in a corner like a dedicated photo bag would. That concludes the tour, so let's see just how much gear we can throw into this thing and what it's like to wear and use. You can fill the camera compartment with the DSLR with up to a 18 to 105 millimeter zoom lens attached, as well as two to three extra lenses, a flash, or other accessories. There's a small elastic pocket built into the hatch that's a great place to put your spare memory cards. 
I like to utilize the zippered pocket in the main compartment for all of my miscellaneous gear while the mesh pockets hold pens, notebooks, or an external hard drive. There's still plenty of room left over for me to toss in a rain jacket for bad weather. As I showed before, the tablet pocket easily swallows tablets and small notebooks. What makes the photo hatchback so great is how it can be reconfigured to fit your day-to-day -day routine. If you're heading to the gym or to a class, just rip out the photo box, fold down the interior divider, and you're ready to go. A change of clothes for the gym or a pair of large textbooks easily fit into the main compartment with some room to spare. Thanks to the inclusion of a waist belt, it turns out that there's more than one way to access your gear while you're on the move. With the hip belt fastened, you can swivel the bag around to your front side, giving you great access to the camera compartment. I opted to ditch the waist strap, but that doesn't prevent me from getting to my gear without taking the pack off, as long as I'm careful. After using this bag for about three months now, I can only cite two small complaints. Normally when I pick up a new backpack, I'll set the shoulder straps to the desired length and never readjust them for the entire lifetime of the bag. And I don't like to have the bag hang loosely, so I'll typically cinch up the straps to a point where there's a decent amount of excess just hanging there. One of the things that I thought was awesome about my first camera bag, which incidentally was a low pro, is that it had these elastic bands which could keep the strap excess from dangling. This is something that would have been extremely easy for Low Pro to implement on this bag without adding any real cost to the bag, so I was disappointed to not see this feature here. Revisiting the side pockets, I also would have liked to have seen some type of buckled or elastic strap above them to better secure tall items. Not having a top-mounted fastener means that I can't carry a slender monopod in here, or even a tall tripod, um, which might topple out if I were moving around a lot. If this is very important to you, then you might consider checking out the Low Pro Rover Pro. That's a bag more geared towards wilderness photographers, since it can accommodate trekking poles, a hydration bladder, and a sleeping mat. It also features removable camera boxes, just like the photo hatchback does. Overall though, I think the photo hatchback is one of the most flexible and good looking backpacks that I've come across. If you find yourself splitting time between an office, a classroom, the outdoors, and planes or trains, then this is a product that I think you could really use to its full potential. Don't forget that Lowepro also makes a smaller 16 liter version of this bag. However, the decrease in size really limits the number of larger items that you can carry. I would only consider it if you are working with a compact system camera and just the bare essentials for photography. Hope you guys enjoyed this in-depth look at this great bag from Lowepro. For more info on the Photo Hatchback 22LAW, you can find a full written review along with plenty of photos on techkings.net. And we hope to bring you more reviews of photography-related products in the future. Until next time, this is Brandon signing off.